Welcome back, Perry once more here to talk to you about a really amazing career choice if you love math, if you're into accounting, if you're into finance, and you love numbers, this is the career for you. If you don't, eh, it's probably not, but stick around, watch the video, because if you're gonna work in information technology, you wanna get a handle on BI, at least at a very minimal level. And that's what we're talking about today is the BI or business intelligence architect role. This is a great role if you are, let's say an accounts payable or accounts receivable, or you're a comptroller, or you're someone in finance where you like finance, you like the accounting, but you feel stuck. You don't feel like you have much growth. You don't feel like you really want to go back and get a graduate degree in accounting to grow your career and you're looking for an alternative. This is a great one. If you are comfortable with technology and you love, love, love finance, math, accounting, this is a great direction to take a look at because here's the thing. It's in demand. It pays well and you're going to be really happy that you look at this direction. Also, you're going to be working with a much broader level of the business. You're not going to be just stuck in accounting finance. You'll be dealing with people across departments in merchandising, in finance, um, in sales, in retail, depending, you know, just to, there's no real limit in terms of the demand for folks to have accurate and usable reporting. So you're going to deal with every part of the organization who needs to report on data and take advantage of that to make leadership management sort of decisions. So it's a really great field. Um, as we discussed in the previous section, information is growing at an insane rate. I think the number I quoted was 90% of the information slash data that exists today was created in the last two years. So it's not slowing down, it's gonna keep growing. And we need to be able to process that information. And companies especially need to be able to process that information. Managers in every organization need relevant, accurate, and timely information to make critical decisions required for their success. But that's hard, much harder now than it used to be because the world has become such a big place in regards to data. There's so much of it, it's hard to translate, it's hard to get your hands on even sometimes, and it's hard to make good, strong decisions for the company to be successful. And more importantly, huge opportunities are being missed every single day because managers are unable to see correlations. And that's what we're talking about. It's not enough just to have raw data. You have to be able to process that data in such a way that you can make correlations between different patterns and behaviors so you can make those decisions in terms of how to spend money, when to execute on certain types of plans and projects. It all depends on the data that you have. So for example, sales data, marketing data, inventory data, HR data, weather data, logistics. Managers must be able to draw these correlations to understand the relationships between all these different types of data. And that's hard because here's the thing, the data is not unified. The data is all over the place. If you're, especially if you're in a large company, you could have data spread across hundreds of databases. Heck, you could have data in all kinds of Excel spreadsheets and I guarantee you probably do. So many companies are still being run from Excel, which is amazing given the level of of complexity of modern business and the simplicity of Excel files and how easily mistakes can be made. There is a huge trend to try to fix that and that's what business intelligence architecture is. And the BI architect is the person pulling all these pieces together, trying to come up with a cohesive architecture that empowers the company to pull all that data together and report in a timely and effective and accurate fashion to help drive the company in a positive direction. So as I said, the BI, you know, business intelligence is the method and the tools, very important because there's lots of tools in BI, used to analyze specific data pertaining to the performance of a business. So performance can mean a lot of things that can cover a lot of ground. For example, let's look at a retail organization for a second. So 
you may want a report that shows how the sales team in a particular region is performing. Well, that data could be all over the place because performance isn't necessarily just sales. Or maybe it is sales, but you're looking for other patterns, like what particular products are selling really well at a particular time of year in that region. So from a manufacturing perspective, you can order more or produce more. So you don't get into a position that, you know, the sales team is selling like great and we've got all this great amazing demand for the product, but we don't have enough product because we didn't have enough data to tell us that we need to manufacture more. These are the decisions going on every single day in companies. Um, an example of them that why managers need this data so they can make accurate decisions. Another route may be maybe too much of a product has been manufactured and it's not selling accordingly because the data was inaccurate or not available. And now you're stuck with all this merchandising and that money could have been used more effectively for another product that is more in demand. All this stuff happens really quick and they need to make those decisions almost in real time based on historical or current information. And again, there's just so much of it. It's hard to make those decisions without really simplified reporting and that's what the BI architect is there to empower the different leaders in a company to, to give them basically. So BI architecture, you're gonna hear that term a lot. What's our business intelligence architecture? Well, really it's gonna vary from company to company. It's gonna have a lot of the same common pieces, but as I said, data comes in all sorts of formats. It comes in the guise of databases. You know, there's all sorts of databases and those databases could be different Formats that could be Microsoft SQL databases, Oracle databases, SAP databases. And you may need one data point over here and another data set from this database. The BI architecture basically inventories all that data, figures out what the company is trying to report on, and it puts together it puts it together in such a format that it's easy to accurately report across all those different data sets. And let me tell you, that's no small task. And the BI architect is the person out there making that happen. They're the ones going through, inventorying the data sources, looking at the requirements from the business, and putting together a cohesive reporting architecture that empowers the company to make the decisions it needs to make in the time frame it needs to make them in so it can be profitable and successful. Now, the business intelligence architect, again, creates that BI architecture. And the BI architect also, they tend to be like a very senior analyst because they're gonna to talk to a lot of people. They're gonna figure out requirements. Okay, business, what do you need? What are we trying to accomplish here? So they have to really be comfortable going out and interfacing with all the different groups in the business that they're working with to do that analysis and work with other business systems analysts to pull that data together to come up with that architecture. And you know, again, their primary goal is to understand those needs and provide a solution that helps the business accurately report and make decisions in a timely fashion. So traits of a great BI architect. Whew, there's a lot of them. They have to be able to collaborate with the business and other technical teams, because the thing is what they're doing is not in a vacuum. They're touching systems all over the place. And those systems are gonna have administrators or people are gonna own them. And they're gonna to have to convince them to say, hey, I need to pull some data out of your database. Um, and I need you as a firewall security person to allow me to pull that data from that database from a whole different geographic region and let it come into our current network here where we reside. And by the way, I really need to figure out um, all these Excel spreadsheets that they were outputting every day. So, you know, working with another business analyst to try to sort through that. They have to be able to collaborate and work with others. They're not doing this work in a vacuum. And they have to be able to see the big picture. Of course, they have to be detail oriented, but this isn't really getting super caught in the minutia. This is trying to see the big picture that's gonna empower the company to be successful. What does this company need in terms of reporting and analytics in order to be successful. And they have to really understand the company and the company's needs, see that big picture so that they can develop a BI architecture that meets those needs. Gotta be curious. You gotta be a really good problem solver getting in there curious about different things because your data could come from sources you have no idea where it's coming from. It could come from some obscure access database 
that's been in use for 20 years and people are still updating it. And, you know, a lot of people don't even know it's there. You know, you have all these sort of broken processes in companies that happen all the time. The BI architect has to like look a little deeper in terms of what people are doing, how they're capturing their data and where that data resides. They have to be just a very curious individual to sort all that out. And then, you know, they're going to work with a lot of different data sources. You're going to work with Microsoft SQL, Microsoft Oracle, SAP, I mean, I'm sorry, Oracle databases, SAP, again, Excel files. It could be web data, like, um, you know, web metrics, web analytics. You're going to work with all these different data sources, and you got to have a pretty good handle on all of them. You don't necessarily have to be an expert, like you don't have to be a database administrator, but you need to know how to work within the database to get what you need out of it or to communicate to the DBA, hey, I really need you to do a dump from these tables. And it requires a lot of learning on the part of the BI architect to get up to speed on all those different data sources. They have to be good problem solvers. We talked about that because bad data means bad decisions. So they always have to be on the lookout for data discrepancies, and then they have to be able to resolve those data discrepancies. Because if the company is getting bad data, they're going to make bad decisions, which are going to cost a bunch of money and potentially jobs. Um, of course, they need strong analytical skills. That almost goes without saying. Um, a strong background in math and accounting is really helpful. If you're starting from scratch and you're not really familiar with finance accounting, this might be a harder road for you. This is probably going to be a better fit if you've got some background, at least if you went to school for accounting or you have some accounting classes in your background, this is going to, that's going to help you get a jump start on this. And again, strong communicator. They're not working in a vacuum. They're out there talking to a lot of different folks and they're talking with senior leadership a lot. Tell me, you know, Mr. Vice President, what do you need? How can I help you? They have to be pretty comfortable with those folks so they can ascertain that information, pull it out and provide them with what the company's looking for, what the leadership is looking for. All right. So what do they make? What are the stats? Well, pretty good, I got to say. Um, the growth rate on this is significant. 31% huge. Going to be creating about 230,000 jobs in the next few years. That's a lot. The crazy thing is this is a really high dollar entry job. Like you can come out and maybe you are working in accounts payable, get certified and expect to make at least $70,000 out the gate. And if you're at this four, five, six years, you can definitely get into the 150s, 160s, depending on what city you're living in. If you're in the Bay Area or Seattle or New York, you can make potentially as much as $200,000 a year as a BI architect. Again, critical role, in demand, very much needed by companies. So the path to becoming a BI architect is a little loosey-goosey. There are some certifications, and we're going to get into one here in a second, but as I mentioned, it really helps to start off with a finance accounting background. And also you need to feel comfortable with information technology. So you want to kind of come up with a certification path that A, gives you the foundation in, in terms of how to get out there and get the analytics that takes advantage of your previous background in finance and accounting. And then also gives you a strong, strong foundation in information technology as a whole. So. I've gone through, I've looked at a lot of different ways to accomplish this. And I think the best solution that I would recommend is to take a look at Microsoft's certified solution expert certification path for BI. Now, this is actually five different certifications. And when you get them, you have this one master MCSE in BI. And especially if you're coming out of, let's say, accounts payable, accounts receivable, and you get your MCSE, you're going to be golden whether within your current company or going to a different company, you're going to be just fine. This certification covers a lot of ground. It covers some of the information technology. It covers some of the database stuff. It covers all of Microsoft's BI tools. And the thing is, Microsoft is a very well used, heavily adopted platform for doing BI. I mean, just look at Excel, but uh, their Power Pivot, their SharePoint platform, Excel services, it's a really great platform for doing BI. Now, there are other platforms I love, 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 like Tableau is a great, great tool. And I would check out Tableau. But if you're looking for a transitional path that you can prove to your company or a new company that you're ready to transition from whatever role you were in, accounting, finance, into a BI role, looking at the Microsoft 
uh, MCSC MBI is going to give you a really grounded path. Now, you may go on to learn new technologies and go in different directions. But again, we're here more to help you get started, get on that starting path. So I would really look at the MCSC for BI. That's going to be your most straightforward path to get in and become a BI architect within a company. All right. I'm going to create a lot more links and notes in the show notes for this around BI. Um, definitely check out the link on the MCSC for BI if you think that this would be a good direction for you. Um, I hope you find this helpful and stick around for the next six-figure career path. Thanks. Thanks.